Hi guys, welcome to another how-to from Advancing Car. So this is uh, a T5.1, specifically a T5.1, because they all come apart differently compared to the T6s and things like that. What I wanted to do was show you how to uh, basically take apart the front of your van, so it makes it easier for you guys to run your cables and stuff for if you're being converted, because obviously now these are much older than like the T6s and the T6.1s, these are coming more readily available, so uh, you're all going to be wanting to do bits to them, you know, run speakers, bit dash cams, uh, power cables, anything. And if you know how to take your van apart, it means you can do a better job of it, you're not going to get rattles, you're not going to be snagging cables. And also, if other people, like me, need to then work on your van, I'm not going to take off a panel and go, oh, that's all a bit of a mess. And it's, I don't have to then tidy it up for you or make it safer. So um, let's jump in the van and I'll show you that it's not too scary actually taking your van apart. So for this, you're gonna need uh, a T25, a T20, and then just like a couple of trim tools, just sometimes it's easier having two. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, as I've already said, get on with it. Right, uh, first off, we're gonna start on the um, center bit with the you know, radio, because that's most likely where people are gonna be wanting to run cables to, and it's just a good place to start, really. And uh, so, to get all this panel out, first off, we're going to, Get your trim tool just in the back here and pop it up like this. There we go. And that just lifts off. Just got two clips at the back here and then a few like locating lugs, if you like, that slide into here. Um, some of you might have a, a 12 volt socket that you can just unplug and it will just sit in here. And that's that. Um, with all your trim, you can just either take it out of your van, or if you, you know, or chuck it in the back of your van, whatever's easiest, really. Then, on the top of this panel here, we've got two T25 large bolts, or screws. They've just got, like, quite a heavy um, thread on. So we'll wind those out. There we go. Put all your bolts somewhere safe. I'll probably move them in a second. Now, what we're going to do is there's various clips down the sides of this panel, and kind of I think there's a couple through the middle, and then there's locating hooks at the, at the bottom. So we're going to pull the top out, work it out, and then we can take it off from there. Um, and then before we fully remove it, we'll just have to unplug these various things. We've got a couple of aftermarket switches and stuff in here, so we'll deal with those in a second. But as with everything, don't just go ripping everything off. If you can, just try and get in there and just use a bit of tension from a trim tool just to run down, help release those clips. There we go. So, like I said, we had a couple in the middle, like that, and then a couple down the side. Actually, they're all down the sides and in the middle, actually. Um, so for us now, I'm going to unplug this. Now, with all these plugs and stuff, it's absolutely fine to remove all these, unplug these things, as long as you don't turn your ignition on part way through, basically, because then the, the van doesn't know that stuff is unplugged. So I've now just got to work out how. I might just leave that like that for the moment, to be fair. Because to be honest, you've already got a lot more access. Now, if you wanted a bit more access before you take the radio out, you can just wiggle out your vents. They just slide in on these kind of uh, forms here. You've just got like a post on the inside, either side and they just slide in. And as you can see, already we're now starting to get lots of space. So by the time we're taking the radio out, obviously we can now access the whole of this central, central area. And then we'll move on to uh, the glove box, obviously. And once you start removing out everything from either side, you'll then go, well, actually I can now feed cables all the way through and make a good, neat, solid job of it. So let's take the radio out now. Again, these are T25s. This is really the only area that T25s are used, it's just this central area. Everything else, as you'll see, is just gonna be loads of T20s. Right, I'm gonna slide this out. On the back of here, we've got, well, we've got extra stuff in here. There's some sort of like parrot hands-free kit fitted, but I'm just going to release the quad lock with its lever arch, and then we're going to unplug the little FM antenna, and that's your radio out. And now, already within the space of, what, three, five minutes, 
We're now all super open in all of this area. If you did want to, you know, maybe you've had a, a radio fitted or you wanted to fit your own one and you literally just wanted to change the unit. Now you've got all this space to be working. Um, and so, you know, if you fit in a GPS or something, then you know, right, well, I can at least start to get in and around here. Then you might want to fit your cable further across or uh, you're picking up powers, anything, doesn't matter what it is. Um, you've just got more room. So now we'll take out the glove box. The glove box has four little covers um, on the four front screws and then there's one screw right at the back in the middle there. So we'll just pop out these little covers. Admittedly, I did just go and get a little flathead screwdriver because there's just a little, like a little gap at the top here. Two little kind of spring moulds, if you like, and they just pop out. And then we get our now T20. Does just fit. And you'll see just how open your dash is within a matter of minutes, basically. I know I've done this a lot, but it's not difficult. Right, so now um, we're gonna wiggle out the glove box. There's like a bit of a, a molding that sits underneath the dash and it's to do with these levers here. And you just have to kind of, uh, what will you do? You'll kind of release the front and then you'll unhook it and pull it forwards. Um, some of you might have a little auxiliary um, socket in the side here. So this one's got a blank, which I'm gonna be using to run some cables through, uh, but you might have an auxiliary. But the great thing is, because we've got this vent out here, we can we can get to it. So you can get like a little trim tool or a flathead screwdriver, and I can show you now actually, if I just use my hand, there you go, I've just removed that blank, but from through here. So you'd be able to unplug the auxiliary cable and have it leaving here. So it's, it's not getting in the way when you then remove your glove box. So we've got some sort of aftermarket cables in here with a big old gland of some sort. Well, I'll sort that out in a minute. But now, already, if I just sit this on my lap, you can now see, look at all this access we've got to everything. So now, you know, we've got stuff already run in here. Oh, there you go. There's a whole parrot unit fitted in here. So if you were fitting, doesn't matter what you're fitting, like I say, anything, anything you're running through, you now have no excuse for just draping cables across because it takes five minutes to get all, just this side, all this open. It's dead easy, nothing to be scared of. There's no real fragile little clips to break anything. You just go carefully at it. And now you've got plenty of places to fix your cables, run them through. You can be careful of any sharp edges or anything. And, um, and it just makes your life a lot easier, basically. So let's, uh, I'll just sort this out, get all this cable out of here quickly, and then uh, we'll move on to A pillars and some of the lower dash. So we've got it all open. Uh, right, so I've just sorted out those cables that are in the glove box. Uh, I didn't want to faff around and have you watch that, don't need to. Uh, right, so get this A pillar out. First, we just need to remove this speaker grill. So this is for tweeters if you've already got them fitted. Um, obviously, it's a useful thing that if you're fitting your own speakers, you can then uh, access this area and get to it. But we need to take this speaker grill out because actually there's a leg that comes off the bottom of the A pillar, which I'll show you. So you just get your trim tool in this leading edge and then you just push it upwards because it has clips along the back edge, uh, two of them, and then just some little guiding hooks that go into the three holes at the front there. So it, when it goes back in, it's like a downward in, clip down. And then this is the leg that's on the bottom of the A pillar that just needs to be out of the way. Um, right, now we're gonna take the A pillar off. This is useful for, um, again, just running cables through, but making sure that if you are gonna run a cable down your A pillar, you can at least cable tie it to the loom that's already in there. Or um, on the driver's side, often there's not a loom, so you can just like use some duct tape or something to hold it on. It stops anything rattling, and it's just neater, tidier, it takes minutes. And it's not like long jobs. Um, so we're just gonna poke the trim tool in the side. This one, admittedly, has been off before. It's not sitting very nicely. It's often a thing. Uh, so we're just going to tweak it out a little bit. And when, when you, once you've just tweaked out the panel slightly, you'll be able to see the legs with the, like a white Christmas tree 
um, clip if you like that just slides into place. I'll show you it when it comes off. But you can, what you can do, you can just tease it out with your thumb, get the trim tool onto the base of the post, and you can hear that, I'm just sliding that clip out of its housing. So I'll be able to show you what I'm doing in a second once it's off, and that lower one's been bent and not put in properly. Right, so what I was doing was I was teasing back the A-pillar and then sliding my trim tool in here and then just pushing out. And they were just sliding out of these yellow fixings here. Now obviously this one has been broken at some point. It's just been smashed back in there, not realigned. When you're realigning A-pillars to put them back on, a useful thing to do is to relocate the base in and then stand you know, on the step or something so you can look out from the inside in and then you can watch everything just guide in and you just take take a couple of minutes just to um, you know guide it or um, line it all up sorry and then put it all in that way you don't break any clips everything goes in and sits properly as it should do no need to rush it doesn't take too long so that's the a pillar out and to find a new clip for that one I think and then as we can see uh, some of these cables have been whoever's run these before has cable tied them on so they're nice and neat but this cable here has just, there we go, look, it's just been wedged into the door rubber. In true, just get it in there, do what you want style. Just be nicer if it was cable tied to the loom, because then it's out of the way of the clips, everything go on, sits on nicely, nothing gets damaged, nothing flaps around. Um, right, so this one, I'm gonna have to try and take out from behind the door rubber, so we've just got the end panel to come off. Right, so end panel that has the airbag uh, plug in. Don't need to worry too much as long as you're careful and you just take it off kind of slowly. Uh, it's not going to unplug itself, separate or anything like that. Um, so you don't have to worry about your airbag light coming on because obviously I know that could be a lot of this stuff. Could be a bit of a fear for people that if they take something out, something unplugs itself or they unplug it and then they forget or something, then they then have to deal with the whole try and clear fault codes and things like that. So the main thing is if you, anything you unplug just don't turn your ignition on. And with airbag plugs, what you can do is it, once you've taken them out, so we're just going to find a way for the trim tool to go in. If you unplug an airbag, so if I was to unplug this now, just unplugging it isn't going to cause any fault. But what I can do, if I know I'm gonna be working in this area for you know, all day or you know, a couple of days or something, because it does kind of cycle itself to check systems, if you pop out the, the actual unit itself, here we go, it means the panel's not in the way, but we can plug this back in, tuck that in there, and we know at no point are we gonna turn the van on and there'll be an airbag problem. You don't have to worry about it. And we've now just got access to get in here. So now I've got access all the way through to here. I can grab things I can then also I've got access up to the A pillar here and I can run all my cables through and that's what's that 10 minutes maximum and we've now got the whole left hand side of the top section of the dash and the A pillar all open it's easy you know we can then start to look at removing this lower panel and that then gives you access into the grommets that go into the engine bay um, but I think what we'll do first is we'll go and do the driver's side and then we can look at the lower section after that. Right, so on this side, um, obviously we haven't got like a glove box or anything to take out, um, but we have got clocks and things. So what we'll do is I won't necessarily take the clocks out, but I'll show you how to access it so you then have got free, free clear run all across the top of the dashboard. So we're gonna start off with this end panel. Again, it's exactly the same as the other side. Just sneak your trim tool in there, gradually work it out, releasing the clips. Then on this side, it's all predominantly about removing T20 screws. Uh, once we've removed this little panel just here, which has your light adjustment switch in it, there we go, it's just got a little clip at this end. We can remove that. And you can either remove the actual plug or remove the whole unit. Sometimes the whole unit comes out, sometimes the plug is easier. It's always a fiddly one, this one. And today is no different. Just gonna, there we go. I'm gonna tease it out with the trim tool. 
There we go. So that's just guided itself in. I think, it's, I think it's these little hooks and things that just get caught up inside here. But that's out. Right, then we're on to T20s and things. Uh, oh, a little side note actually. Uh, anyone who doesn't know how to remove their light switch, don't try and prise in there around the edge of it to try and get it out. All you're going to do is end up damaging it. To remove the light switch, have it in the off position, and this goes the same for T6s as well. Push it in so it goes in like that, then twist it to the middle. Oh, doesn't want to go. Give it a little jiggle from the back. Oh, this one might be previous. Ah, there we go. It's just got a bit sticky. So, all I've done is I've twisted it with it still indented. You can see it's still pushed in, and then all the way to the middle, and it releases these hooks here. So, if I there you go. So what you're doing is you're releasing these hooks that are inside. There's one this end and one down the bottom. So if I show you with it out, I'm gonna push it, give it a twist, and you're releasing those hooks. And then you're just pulling it out. Get to the plug on it, and that's your light switch out. It means you can pick up various bits. So there you go, someone's picked up power for something from the back of the light switch, which is fine. As long as you fuse it, it's not a problem at all. It's just a good one to know so you don't just go trashing your light switch. Uh, right, so let's get a T20, start removing screws. We've got screw here, screw here. We then have to, with the T5.1, we have to remove the, uh, the lower kind of kick panel, the black one that's underneath, all the various screws there. And then behind that is then the other screws for this panel and also this section here which is going into the centre section. But once we've loosed the screws I'll show you how then actually it becomes quite free and we can get something. So I'll just crack on and get those out. That's T25. So that's the under tray out, and that was, uh, how many screws is that? So you've got one up in this corner, one next to the OBD plug, one in the middle, one to the side, and one on the angle there. Don't need to worry about these two, because that's just holding on the uh, steering rack cover. So we take that out, and then we've then got access to the couple of screws that are just holding the bottom edge of these on, and also you'll notice that there's two panels that kind of link up with each other. There's a couple of screws that just hold those together. So I'll go back under, take those out, I'll show you how they come out. As is often the case with a lot of these older vans, some of the screws are missing, so I only had one to deal with. Now, to get the last screw out of this side, might be useful if Matt goes around the other side, actually, uh, so you can see from the other side. So to get this main panel out, you've got one more screw that's behind this section here. So what we're going to do is just pull that forward a little bit. And then you can get a trim tool up in this top section here. And just work it in. And there'll be a little clip that wants to release. There we go. And then it actually becomes quite loose around this whole section in front of the gear stick and you can pull it down and then you can see this last screw just here. So once I've wound this screw out, this whole front section there then just comes off. That then gives you all your access to your BCM and all those sorts of things. Right, now I'll take this off. There's just a couple of clips holding it in places. There we go. And that's that whole panel off. Then you'll find behind all this wadding here, oh, that's just loose in this case, there's your BCM. So, um, you know, some stuff gets fitted and wired into the BCM, but at least it gives you all that access. And you've got all this access that, say, you were running some, you know, some footwell lights. Maybe you bought the footwell lights that we sell. Um, you can fit them into your under panels. And then now we've got nice access to get across to here and you can wire them into your light switch so that when your lights come on, your footwells come on. 
Um, so we're already doing well in terms of the amount of access we've got for running cables. Uh, so we'll go and take out the underside panel from the passenger side and then you're all gonna, already going to see that however long I've been doing this now, it's what, 15 minutes maybe, um, 20 minutes, we've got so much access to everything in the van. Um, oh, that's right, I was going to say, with removing the, with regards to moving the clocks, there's two screws, you'd need a torch. Uh, what I might do is we'll just, we'll get a nicely lit picture of the two screws that are pointing downwards. Um, and there's two T20 screws that you'll need to undo and then they're just going to the bottom of the clocks here. Once you've undone those two screws, you then just put your hand up behind and you'll have access and you'll just be able to push the back of the clocks and then the clocks will come forwards, you can unplug them and then you then got full access all along. And again, don't worry about having the clocks un uh, unplugged as long as you don't turn your ignition on. Uh, you're not going to cause any faults or anything like that. So uh, let's go to the passenger side, soon get a bit more open up for you and then that'll be pretty much it really. So again, because the T5.1 is all just everything screwed into place, uh, we have to unscrew the underneath kick panel on the passenger side, and then we can attack all the screws that hold in this whole section here. And again, it's all just about giving you as much access to everything. So obviously, once we've got this one out, we've got lots of clear access to then get to your fuse board. So uh, let's get on with it. Sometimes these are a little awkward just because of the length of the screwdriver, it might be easier to get a little side ratchet with a T20 on. Let me go with a side ratchet. Unhook it, ah oh, look, we found dash cam cabling. <clears throat> right, so that's that panel out. That was just three screws along here and then the two big hooks that hold it up and stop it flapping around. Okay, now we can access the various screws that are just holding this main section on. Uh, so again, there's one behind this little side panel here. Take that off, got one here one on the side, uh, one up in this hole here. Um, that one's missing. That must sound like a dentist. Uh, then we've got ones in the sides here, one there. And then I think if I remember correctly, it should then just start to wiggle off. Okay, now let's just give it all a bit of a wiggle, see where it might still be attached. Various clips going along there. What have we got in here? I can't remember if there's a screw behind there or not. I think there might be. So we're just going to pop out this drinks holder and we can carry on from there. Right, so I was just re-jogging my memory on how the lower section comes apart because we don't do as many T5.1s nowadays, probably because you guys are doing it all yourselves. Um, drinks holder doesn't have to come out, it's just, it's just a stubborn little clip that's up in here that just needs kind of teasing out. So let's, uh, let's get that out. Might be able to do it from here possibly. There we go. So it's just this top one here that was being a bit, a bit of a pain because then the drinks holder gets unscrewed from down here. So that now, have I got one more screw down there or is it just hooked in? But even still, actually, even if you didn't want to fully take it out, you've now got all this access. And look, I can now remove this dash cam cable that's been fitted because I've been asked to remove these cables as well. And it just, it opens up everything. Uh, you've got full access, that screw there, Oh, there's one more screw down the bottom, so if I undo that, then this whole panel will come out. Lots of screws to undo in a T5.1. There we go. 
go. Right, and then we'll just wiggle that out. There we go. That's that whole panel out. There we go. Uh, so that's about it really. That's just a quick run through and how to on accessing as much as your dash, as much of your dash in your T5.1 as possible really. So, you know, if you've got a weekend job you wanted to do or you just had a little kind of, you know, maybe you had a rattle or something or just something you wanted to do, but you were a bit nervous of taking your van apart um, and you didn't want to go break anything because you didn't know where any clips were or anything like that, hopefully this will help and give you an idea on how to how to take your car apart and it's not that scary really um, obviously putting it all back together you just do the reverse of what we've just done um, so you could almost watch the video back and just go oh, okay now I need to put that back in put that back in and go through there so I hope this has helped we thought it might be a useful one um, and we'll try and think of more other how to's that might be useful you can drop down in the comments anything else you might find useful um, and then yeah go from there if you can follow all the socials and stuff give the video a like if you liked it that's always really helpful. Um, on a side note, just quickly, I think we have got a removing the clocks video. We'll have a dig through, see if we've got it, and uh, we'll link it to the video as well. But yeah, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Just a quick one, me again. Uh, obviously, if you're doing any of these jobs in your cars, it's useful to have the tools. Um, so I've been using Bojo tools and uh, these one of these Torx drivers, um, little side ratchet and a little flathead. Um, you know, if you need to buy these tools, then they're all linked in the uh, description on this video. And we also have like an Amazon link on the top of our, uh, uh, our YouTube page, which takes you to all the other tools and things that we use as well. Just a useful thing. And it's always fun buying new tools. So check it out. Hopefully it'll help. Cheers.